What's up everybody and welcome to the 19th episode of my 1976 F750 crew cab build series. In the previous episode you watched us mount the hub assemblies, wheels and tires on the rear axle of the truck. Which means in today's episode we are going to jump back inside the cab and start running wiring harnesses throughout the dash and the cab itself. After that we are going to make a custom HVAC ventilation system for the dash, for the AC and the heat. So there's nothing to it but to do it. Stay tuned. So since we're waiting for parts for the rear axle, we are going to jump back into the cab and start reassembling things that we kind of diverted from earlier. So we're going to get the dash back in. The HVAC system's already good, it's mounted, but we're gonna get the dash back in. We know it fits with the HVAC system, with the new uh, windshield wiper motor and things like that, but we need the dash in there so we can finish running wiring throughout the dash, as well as getting things mounted like like the emergency brake pedal, um, we can mock up the brake pedal, the, the gas pedal, things like that. Also, our new dash bezel will be coming in the next week or two, so with the dash in, we can get that mounted in, get it wired up, and see how everything works all together, finally, in one position. But it's a good time to do this while we're waiting for parts, and uh, it kind of gives us something to do. We can clean out the inside of the cab get this dash dialed in because this is one of the biggest headaches of this project get the wiring all figured out and hopefully get this project going smooth while we're waiting for parts
Alrighty, you guys, we are getting the wiring all figured out. I know it still looks like a mess, but from this morning, it looks extremely organized to Kyle and I. Um, there's obviously multiple wiring harnesses inside the vehicle right now, currently. And I'll just give you guys a quick little rundown. These guys, there's a strand of wires on each side over there and right here. And these go towards the end or the back of the truck. Uh, these are for your uh, seats and your sensors on that as well as your uh, seat belts, things like that. This guy goes all the way back there. Now there is also one up there for the dome light that we will incorporate it into the factory dome light here in the 76. There's a conjunction box right there. We are going to tie in all of these cab lights into one of these relays. We just don't know which one right now because I do want to keep the cab lights. I think it's kind of a cool feature to these bigger trucks to have the cab lights um, operatable. Um, over here we have a couple fuse boxes and things like that. Now we have mounted them with just self-tapping screws. And the reason for that is we just needed them in place secure for right now. When we tear apart everything, we will put the rivet uh, nuts for everything. Um, there's one right there, one that's on the other side to keep that intact, and then these two right here. Um, I know this does look like kind of tacky with the, that fuse box on the floor or the floor pan. However, that is the almost the exact location that it was in the six seven power stroke. Obviously, your feet are going to be right there with the seat being right here. So I'm sitting in the cab right now, so it's kind of weird. Anyways, your feet will be right here, not necessarily up underneath the HVAC system. So that should be secure and safe. We'll also make just a tiny little box out of sheet metal to kind of protect it so no one's constantly kicking it and could possibly affect the wiring going into that. Now looking in the center of the dash, <clears throat> We have all of the components from the 6.7 Power Stroke right now. It, they're all ran through they, where they were in the 16 Power Stroke. Now, will we use these? I'm not necessarily sure. It does fit really well in here, and it also keeps everything a plug-and-play system. One thing we can't use is the radio because it's so big and bulky that it would just take up this whole entire area. So we will have a, uh, an aftermarket radio. However, there's a company that makes retro style radios that work in modern day vehicles. They also have Bluetooth, Sirius, uh, Apple Music, hookups, all that stuff. So you get all the modern amenities, but with a classic retro look. So I do like that. Moving over here, we have tons of stuff like our trailer brakes, all of our, um, not outlets, but uh, I don't want to say USBs either. I call them just cigarette lighters. I know they probably have a special name because they're not cigarette lighters, but uh, that's what I call them. So we have all them right here. And we will incorporate these into where these old uh, gauges would be, per se, um, just because they fit really well. And they also are almost the same diameter as what came out of the factory dash. So it won't look out of the norm to have these kind of sticking right there. It'll look really nice. It'll be really simple because we can just cut everything out and kind of pop them in there, make a mounting uh, bracket for them and they'll sit really well in there. And then moving over here, this is for our, uh, we have our gauge cluster and then we also have our steering column. So that's for all that. This back here, I believe is for our gauge cluster. And then over here we have some more stuff for our lights, things like that. They'll also be mounted in here. But that's pretty much it for right now. We are going to get working on the dash. Um, instead of retrofitting all this stuff into the center, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna cut this out and weld in a piece of sheet metal. So that way we can start from scratch and all of our holes are going to be the exact dimensions. And then we can also design it to look any way we want. So I think that'll look really nice. Um, and that is pretty much it for right now. We do have to mount up our uh, emergency brake uh, pedal and things like that. But for the most part, all the wiring is in its proper location. And we can kind of just keep going with uh, organizing it and making it look as good as possible. Got anything, Kyle? Yeah, this is not for the faint of heart. Anyways, we're going to get back to organizing. We'll uh, take this off, start cutting this out, add some new fresh metal to it, and uh, you guys will see that next. 
All right, you guys, change of plan today. In my last update video, I had mentioned that we were going to seal off the center or the dash with some sheet metal so that way we kind of had an empty or clean slate to put all of our gauges. Um, but Kyle mentioned that we should probably figure out all the HVAC system work, uh, first. And we are gonna build a center console for this and a little piece that goes right around here to conceal the HVAC system. So we're gonna start doing that first. And the reason for that is we can pretty much hide all of our gauges and any other computer components in the center console or make it look really organized and clean that way um, without putting everything on the dash itself. So we think that's gonna be probably the best route to go. We do wanna run some of the six, seven uh, kind of HVAC, HVAC piping throughout the truck. So this comes off of the HVAC unit in the factory six, seven, it went underneath the bench seat to this which fed heat to the back seat. So we are gonna incorporate that, but we, uh, we just need to build a center console first that'll hide all that stuff. So that's what we're gonna do first thing today and uh, be on our way. Right, Kyle? <laughs> Seal of approval. Alrighty, here's our little makeshift center console for the time being. Uh, we need to start modifying some of the six, seven power stroke HVAC uh, parts. This sits in the back and turns your defrost See if I can do it right here. Open and close. So what we have to do in order to keep this with the original HVAC system, we essentially have to cut this pretty much down here and around for this factory mounting point. So we're gonna get Now that you guys can probably hear me again, we are going to keep this, uh, this first cut out that opens and closes it. We're gonna get rid of the second one because we don't really need it. And that way we keep the factory mounting location for the HVAC system. The reason why we have to do this is the six, seven power stroke motor for the windshield wipers, it sticks in the way. So if you see that, these two holes right here and there's one right there, that's where these two mount up right here. So this, Ugh, sorry, everything's falling over. So the secondary is hitting this right here. So, so to make it fit, we gotta get rid of it and then we should be kosher from there. We can run our HVAC and our defrosters off to each side from this. So I'm going to start getting cut on this uh, or get going cutting on this. Kyle has also been running some more wire. We sent one of the wires for all of the dome lights and everything like that uh, down this A pillar, I believe is what it's called. It's right here. So that way it's all nice and hidden and we will have dome lights front and back throughout the whole truck. We'll also be able to incorporate all of the uh, cab lights with this wiring. So that'll look really nice. But uh, yeah, Kyle's been going away or going to town on figuring out the wiring system and we're gonna get this cut really quickly, see how it fits and keep running all the HVAC components to hopefully have it done by today.
Alrighty, we have an update for you guys. We have modified these pretty dang well. Like you guys just saw, we had these mounted in the dash on both sides and essentially we took the flat pieces of plastic and we pushed them into the crevice of the dash to kind of utilize the whole entire dashboard just because we will have things like the jockey box and now that I brought the gauge cluster, we will have that in place. Um, but we wanted to use up the whole entire dash so that way we weren't in the way of any of these other components that are gonna be in the dashboard. And while we finished up those, Kyle started mocking this up. This is gonna go in the front. The 2016 Super Duty uh, HVAC system, there's vents that come out the front that go to the front of the Super Duty dashboard. And uh, we have to utilize those vents and make our own. So essentially Kyle made this little box that's just gonna sit right on top of that 2016 HVAC system. And it's gonna tuck up right in here, essentially. And I think it's gonna look really clean, really simple, and pretty much do what it's meant to do, which is to feed air to the driver and the passenger. And then I also brought this from my house. We do have to modify it a little bit to make it fit into the, the dash. Like we have to cut these little tabs off right here and that will allow the gauge cluster to kind of sit down where it needs to sit. Um, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. We're super stoked about these. These mount really nice up in there. The curvature of them from the factory dash actually work really well with this dashboard as well. Right, Kyle? He doesn't know. He made it look really nice, but he doesn't know. Uh, anyways, he's too busy he drinking coffee right now. I made this um, Yeah, you can tell the one between Kyle's and mine. But the hole's my fault. I got it too hot and it's stuck together. But you fuckers won't see it when it's done. <laughs> we have to do a little patchwork here and there, but that's, but that's okay. But first thing up this morning is we are going to cut this down, get this in place, because we have to verify that that gauge cluster fits with this left-hand driver's side vent system, as well as this one over here with the jockey box. And we will give you guys an update here shortly after you guys watch us get this installed.
All right, you guys, we have finally finished plastic welding all of the pieces together. These two pieces are from the donor truck and we custom bent the rest of it out of flat sheets that you guys saw previously. Uh, it just took a long time to cut everything and then obviously using this guy to heat up every single seam and uh, fusing them together, plastic welding. So it did take us a little bit of time, but we do have a complete kind of HVAC uh, system for the F750. So we're going to toss this up in there. Uh, we're also going to toss the dash in, see how this fits with the dash as well as with the 2016 factory HVAC and see if we have to modify this at all and if we have to cut and trim it. So we will give you guys an update here shortly and uh, yeah, there's nothing to do but to do it. We got the dash back in, we have the HVAC attached to the dash, but we did run into just a little bit of a hiccup. Uh, when we figured out the dimensions and the sizes of all this stuff, it was kind of just a guesstimate. So if you see that box I was just making, it sits on the defroster on the 6-7 HVAC system. It just sits on there. That's how it was in the factory spot. Um, the piece that we cut in half to get the right hand side and the left hand side. It just sat on the defroster back there. Um, wasn't bolted on or anything like that. It just sat there and that foam is kind of what seals the air and pushes it. doesn't really push it but it doesn't allow it to seep outside of that uh, that foam. So we're trying to we're trying to make the same exact thing just our own to fit in this dash. So it looks pretty good but we are short as you can see, uh, the right to left, the left hand side is perfect, right down it. The right hand side is a hair bit short as well. It was hard to have the dash in here and get precise measurements of this just because, I mean, you can't really get in there, you can't really make a template or anything like that. Anyways, so we're going to remove the dash again, remove the new HVAC uh, venting that we just made, and we are going to widen it a little bit more and uh, extend it a little bit more so that way it I'm trying to get my hand out of the way so you guys can see that way we can compress that foam and have a really nice contact and not allow any warm air out now it is air it is going to seep in certain areas but we are just trying to limit that as much as possible and so that is our game plan so we're gonna pull this back out uh, do a little bit of adjusting on that and pretty much put it back in test fit it and if we have to do it a couple times to make it perfect then so be it and uh, we'll be on our way.
All right, you guys, we have an update for you. Let me just jump on in here. We have a complete dash. I'm stoked about this. The HVAC venting, I did adjust and it fits perfectly in there. I'll try to show you guys. Um, let me grab a light really quickly so you guys can see. I don't know how I'm gonna hold the GoPro and the light, but we'll figure it out. Okay, so right there, right there. You can see how the foam is compressed just a little bit. That's what you want. You want it compressed a hair bit so that way there's still a, a, a nice seal. Uh, obviously it's not bolted completely in or in at all. So you're not gonna get a 100% seal on that, but you do want a little bit of compression on the seal because that's how you know you have nice contact on it. So I'm really stoked with how that is. Uh, everything works out. It, it goes right on top. I don't know if I can see it from above. But you can actually see the, the venting right there. Maybe from over here. No, not really. But anyways, it's gonna come right up through here, through the defroster, and it just goes out to the left and to the right. And uh, we're gonna eventually have to cut holes here on the dash and here on the dash, so that way the vents that are right here and right here can obviously defrost the windshield when it turns on. But we got the dash or the gauge cluster in there. I did have to modify it from here across to there. I just had to cut off just the lip of the metal, uh, but you can't even tell at all. Not at all. Um, I do have mismatched bolts. I need to order new ones, so those will be all, uh, they'll all be the same. And right here, the back side, the, uh, the clip that it screws into, uh, it fell off when I was installing this, so I'm gonna have to find it and pop it in. But I'm super stoked with the gauge cluster being in. Uh, we have one of the, uh, I don't know, uh, whatever you wanna call these things. Uh, it wasn't the uh, cigarette lighter. It's just a little drawer, I guess, whatever it is. And then we have the- uh, Cigarette, it's an ashtray. It's an ashtray, there we go. Anyways, we have the ashtray in there. And then we have the jockey box door on there. This is gonna stay open because that's where radio will go. And then all of the, like yeah, I don't smoke cigarettes. Sorry guys, I forget that there's ashtrays in cars. Anyways, this is gonna be for the radio, for all of the controls, for the heating element, as well as the AC. So we're gonna leave this blank for now, just because uh, we're gonna have to make something custom between the radio deck and all the controls. But uh, we are stoked with how this looks. It's we officially have a 6.7 gauge cluster inside the dash with 6.7 HVAC system. It all fits, it all looks really nice, really clean, and it doesn't look like uh, an addition. It just looks like it came from the factory like this. Other than the lower section, we got a height. Yeah, we do have to, I think I've already shown you guys, we do have vents for this right here. And then obviously we will have a piece of metal or that plastic that we just uh, plastic welded we'll have it come around here so that way you can't see any of that um, but I'm gonna get back a little bit and kind of show you guys what it looks like super stoked it looks really nice ignore all the wires that those time will come for us to funnel it through the dash and uh, that's gonna be a huge pain in the butt but that's what it looks like for now and we are stoked with how it turned out and we're excited to see just how functional this can be. All right, you guys, that's gonna be a wrap for today's episode. We got the dash and the gauge cluster all dialed in inside the truck. I know we didn't run the whole wiring harness throughout the dash, but in my opinion, there's no sense in running the whole wiring harness, plugging it in, and then immediately unplugging it when we tear down and break down the inside of the cab for paint. I don't want extra plug-in and unplugs of um, all the brackets and plugs because that's how you end up breaking those and that's just kind of an added risk I didn't want to take I know the truck runs. I know the electrical is good I drove it to Kyle's shop when I bought the truck so I know all of that works It's just an added risk that I didn't want to take we did find all of the outlets cigarette lighters uh trailer brake all those types of plugs we did find those and plug them in so we know those um the ends of those wiring harnesses, they are plugged into the proper place. We just need to find a place inside the dash or the new center console for those when the time comes. And so I'm stoked with how it looks. I'm super happy with the way the dash works, especially the gauge cluster inside of that. That was kind of like the biggest unknown for this whole entire project. Um, it was also the biggest requirement that I had for Kyle and I was to keep the factory dash 
and the factory gauge cluster because I hate an aftermarket look or um, an updated uh, dash swap. I hate that look inside of the classics. So we maintain that, we maintain the classic look and I am stoked for that. So we really appreciate you guys watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next one.